today we'll be taking a look at the 747-200 specific... Both connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Today we'll be taking a look at the 747-200 specifically how to use the autopilot and I'll get back to you once we're in the air. Let's make a start. Starting pushback and you may start engines. Time that good, didn't I? <laughs> I'll see you up there. Alright, so here we are on the way to 2-3 left for departure out of Manchester Airport in the UK. I'm not going to suggest that anything that I'm showing you here is by the book, but what I am going to say is you'll know how to use this autopilot through and through everything it can do by the end of this video. And so stay watch for that. And so I'm basically configured for takeoff. I've got my flaps and whatnot. The only thing uh, that is remaining for me to do is to set my stab trim, uh, which is uh, 4.1. And we're more or less there. There we go. And I'll push the green band down. I've already turned the packs off for takeoff. And here we are coming on the runway. We'll get rid of... Approaching two, three, left. Get rid of body gear steering. We'll put all the lights on. And I'm aware that this in part the tutorial. But the takeoff is. So we got all the lights on. I didn't want to miss anything out whatsoever. Uh, coming down here, we'll put the transponder on. And uh, we'll put the weather radar on also. I think I went one notch too far. Yes, I did. And I will turn that on, on here. I do got real world weather on. So you never know, but it looks on clear. Runway two, three, left. All right, so here we are. Runway two, three, left. Let's come to a full stop and go over the takeoff with regards to the uh, autopilot real quick. I'm just going to put the parking brake on. The autopilot has two sort of main parts you've got this part here which is uh you know your basically your lateral and vertical navigation in other words you're steering as well as you're up and down and then down here this part here is uh your auto throttle uh aspect of the autopilot here and so let's briefly go over this so during the checks uh, pre-takeoff, it'll want you to roll this over to go around and then back to take off dry. And so I don't know why it wants you to do that, but it just does. And then you've got these three modes here. Now, if we look at them real carefully, you'll see that the left one is labeled EPAS, which is, uh, is basically a thrust setting for a specific part of the flight. Yeah, so when you... Two, three, Shut, up. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Alright, so your EPAS, when it comes to takeoff, you're going to go whatever, more or less full power minus whatever for the temperature, right? So you don't want to go at a certain speed or a certain Mach. You want a certain power setting, and that's going to be the same for climb as well. And so we'll start off with this one selected with this mode in takeoff dry. What this is going to do is give us maximum thrust for takeoff. Now, we can derate it using this switch here. So 0 0.00 is absolute max, yeah? And if we derate it there by 0 0.01, it's like knocking off one degree on on, on your uh, Boeings or, or flexing a bit when it comes to your Airbus, yeah? So if you knock it down like that, this is already quite a reduction. I think it's uh, I think it's measured in percentage points, so it's 5% less. Don't quote me on that. But if you're heavy, you're going to really struggle getting off the ground. And, and so until you're sort of comfortable with it, I would recommend going full uh, until you sort of know exactly how that is. All right, so with that out of the way, let's come to the takeoff now. And so first thing to note, we've got the runway heading in here, 232, and I've got my initial course set in. That's not really much to do with the autopilot, but just to let you know, I'm going to be taking off and turning left, basically following the uh, Listo. Is it one Romeo? I can't remember, but it's the Listo something departure, which is basically up left and intercept uh, the 159, where it's going to be the 339 radial from Honolulu. So we'll be uh, flying towards it on a heading of 159 degrees. So that's it. Here's our V2 speed as calculated by the computer here. Assuming all is well, we'll accelerate straight through that. Our initial climb, this is another point here, you'll see that for the initial pitch is 14 degrees. The way that you tune... Uh, On runway, two. Shut up, buddy. The way that you tune that, you've got your uh, flight directors here. 
And so once you turn those on, you know, whichever side you're flying, it's typically you're going to be on the captain's seat, right? So you'll turn yours on first and the other guys on second, just like you'd normally do. And then if you look here, you've got this uh, vertical bar. Let me turn that back on now that Bet is shut up. And I'm referring to this yellow bar here that you can see me. Now, I'm, I'm using a control to move that up and down. I suggest you bind that as well. And this is what we're initially pitching for. Now, if you remember, it said 14 degrees. So, you know, you've got 10 there. There's 12 and a half. The next bar's 15. And you can't go past there anyway. And so we're going there. And that's what we're going to rotate to on the initial climb. And then after that, we'll just see how it goes. All right. So with that done... Parking brake set. No, 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 no. Parking we're getting really rid of the parking brakes. All right. So let's wind the engines up now. I'll increase the volume. And then... I'm going to hit my toga switch, which is basically this auto throttle here as far as this goes, all right? We hit that, and we see there on the auto throttle, we get the EPA light on, yeah? So auto throttle is now going all the way up to whatever the EPA is. You see, it's pulling back slightly. It overshot it a little bit. Don't worry about that. And now you can hear we're on the takeoff run. You hear thrust set. There's your 80 knot call. And it's the standard takeoff, right? There's your rotate call. And there we go. Keeping that rotation going. There's your positive rate. So I'm going to bring the wheels in. Keep pulling back and we're going for that initial climb. All right, there we go. We're on there. Now I'm going to briefly pause. I have Command A bound to my Holtas, yeah? And you see you've got two stages. At the bottom you've got Off, then you've got Man, and then you've got Command at the top. If you put it in Man, it basically keeps your wings level and keeps your pitch at where you were, all right? So on the initial climb out, especially if you're on VATSIM and you're starting to got other things to do, put it in Man, right? First thing. So let's unpause and see what it does. Put it in Man. And now autopilot, if you want to call it that, is just keeping it there. It's not going to try and follow anything. It's just going to keep that pitch and the wings level. All right. Pause it again real quick. You see we're climbing. We're well above a thousand feet now. So we're sort of at the point where it's time to start, you know, reducing from takeoff to climb. The way that I like to do it, if we drop straight into climb thrust, it's not going to have enough power. However... If we look here, we can turn this dial from takeoff to con. Con is continuous max thrust, all right? If we left the engine in takeoff dry, the engines are not, you know, they're only rated to do that for about five minutes anymore, and we risk damaging them. So turn it into con as soon as you feel comfortable. Beware, though, there is a massive drop in thrust from takeoff to continuous max. So beware, especially if you're heavy, and we're quite heavy now you're going to struggle to climb at that point, and so you're going to want to reduce your climb rate. And so you may wish to stay in takeoff and start getting a bit of speed and cleaning up before you switch into con. I'm going to do that now, and we'll uh, see just how much of a drop that is. Let's put it into uh, autopilot first of all, and I'm going to just put this into vertical speed mode just so you can observe the drop. Let me just reduce the vertical climb to about 2,000 feet. Don't worry, I'll touch that in a minute. I'll take a look here, the speed. We're sort of holding. In fact, we're accelerating quite a bit on the Mac. Watch what happens when I turn this over to Con. And again, you can bind this. I'm just coming over there to show. Now look how much those throttles come back and you heard how much they come back. This is Mac's continuous thrust. Look at what's happened to the speed as well. Remember how quick we were accelerating before. And that's now unable to maintain. Look at that. The IAS is dipping off there. I'm aware there's a little bit of turbulence, but look at that. So the way that we're going to deal with that, I'm just going to move that vertical speed. And again, you can bind this to your whole task. I also suggest you do that. There's not that many controls you need to bind. That is one of them. So I'm going to reduce it to about 500 foot climb. And you can see it's starting to climb now. So let's keep this in autopilot mode. The default select here is heading. So let's keep that there. 
let's keep this one in VS. Now you see here we've got an altitude select. That is the altitude, uh, you know, top of climb for our initial uh, SID, the index departure. In order that we don't overshoot that, you see here we've got this switch here. Put it down and see that it says Alt Cell and it lights up green. What this autopilot's going to do now is once it reaches 5,000, it's going to stay there. It's going to take a little while because we're on a slow climb here. You can see taking forever to accelerate. And I'm just going to manually turn my way south. I see I've already shot through the VOR while I've been gapping, but that, that's no issue. It's an autopilot tutorial, not on how to do a departure. Right, so I'm going to turn myself onto 150. All right, now you see with this gentle climb, we're finally starting to pick up speed. So I'm going to start bringing my flaps in from 20 to 10. Flaps 10. And that's going to enable me to accelerate a little quicker. Now you may say, well, I want to maintain 200 knots. Don't have to type it in here. Let's wait until it gets to about 200. There we go. And I'm going to flick this switch over from VS to IAS. Now let's assume ATC clears us uh, up to 10. See, we caught it there. Let's switch it back to IAS. We've got 10,000 in the window. And the autopilot is not going to fly at whatever speed we've got here, which is 154. Remember, that was our V2. We haven't done anything there. It's going to maintain at whatever speed you were when you flicked that switch in, providing your altitude there is not the same. And... Remember down here, we're in EPAS mode, yeah? Which is the thrust mode. We're not trying to hold a speed or a Mac. We're trying to maintain continuous max thrust here, all right? Let's, uh, let's continue dialing this up. Let's just assume we've been cleared up to 20,000 feet at this point. And I'm just going to spend a moment to uh, get my packs back on. Altimeter setting. And uh, we'll go to 992 as well, just to shut Betty up and so forth. All right, so we're climbing now at 200 knots, thereabouts. And we think, well, we want to carry on cleaning up. So let's change this from IAS back to VS, yeah, which is vertical speed mode. And all I'm going to do is reduce my vertical speed once more. Let's go to about a thousand foot a minute climb. Because we've lowered the pitch, of course, the speed's going to start accelerating now. Completely ignoring this again because we're in EPAS mode. If we wanted to focus on this, we'd have to drop the speed back, but one thing at a time. So we are flaps 10. We're way beyond retract speed, so let's go flaps 5. This book here is also flaps 1, so wait till we got a bit of speed and recover. Right, let's move to flaps 1. And once, once we shoot through that final bug, I'm going to go flaps up. There we go, flaps up. All right, I'm going to turn the gear lever off as well. Coming upstairs, let's get rid of the outboards, the runway turn-off lights, uh, logo and wing, and we'll release cabin crew. All right. You can see... I'll just turn that down a bit. The uh, air is going to get a bit noisy now. We're starting to accelerate through 250. You know, an ATC is going to start and get upset unless we ask for a high-speed climb because we're still below 10,000. And so you can real quickly either put that into IS mode or the way I would do it if I was sort of panicking, I would just quickly roll that wheel back. The next thing also I want to do is come over from continuous and put that into climb mode. So now the thrust, it's a thrust setting. Remember, it's going to be at full power, whatever this setting is, yeah? So TOD, takeoff dry, is going to give max power. Continuous there, if we put that on, is max continuous thrust. Climb, it's going to put climb thrust. If we move that over to cruise, it's going to drop it back and give max power what is rated for the cruise. And GA go around, it's going to increase again. So let's keep that in climb because we want to climb. And you see it's going to increase the power again. Here we are again at 250. Let's put that into IAS mode. And again, whenever you flick that on, it's going to maintain this speed here. So there you go. We're about 250. 
All right, we're through 10,000 feet. We want to start accelerating to our best climb, which in our case is about 315 knots today. So same procedure again. Put that into VS. Reduce that. And if you want, just to help you remind you, you could dial it in here now. We could go 314. And that's just going to put that orange bug on the airspeed indicator as a reminder. Remember, autopilot is going to completely ignore this at this stage because we're still on the thrust setting, not the speed setting. And as we're through 10,000, let's get the other lights off as well. And let's, uh, oh yeah, turn the uh, flight starts off. And coming back here to the engineers, uh, we want to put fuel heat on auto one two three four and yeah with that everything looks good so and again if you if you're a bit more eager to capture the speed you can always reduce your vertical speed even more just remember if you're supposed to be in a climb you're not to fly level you know you can reduce it all the way back to about 500 feet maybe is a minimum climb but if you're in a climb you're in a climb you're not supposed to fly level at all all right so we're getting near that orange speed so let's flip that round over again to IAS and this is now autopilot is going to pitch up and down however it needs to maintain that speed needle on where we were when we turned it on which happens to be there and again if I spin this round doesn't make any difference it's not like a level change climb in the newer ones where as soon as you spun that speed the pitch is going to change it's a level change on wherever the speed was when you turned it on Right, while we're waiting for that to get some height, let's have a look at some other things. We're approaching this uh, VOR beacon here. We're about 33 miles away from it. If I turn my course needle here, you can see... We're about 158 if we want to fly to it directly. You can see we're currently heading 150. Let's turn ourselves left to 140. And let's assume that we want to intercept this radio, let's say uh, 165 degrees. So we need to be more to the left to then turn to the right. Yeah, not really a lesson on intercepting VORs, but just let's assume that's what we wanted to do. Currently in heading mode, if we want to intercept that VOR lock, which we can see it's active, we can see we're about to do so. All that we do is we turn that to the right VOR lock. Autopilot is now going to steer however it needs to to intercept that needle and put it in the middle. It's going to automatically line us up with it and then fly us down that needle on whatever heading we've got there in the course. Right, let's uh, let's assume now ATC. Oh no, we're nearly there. We'll wait for 20,000 feet. Let's assume ATC is going to hold us at 20,000 feet for whatever reason. Traffic doesn't matter. Our final climb is going to be 31,000. But for now, let's assume there's been a hold at 20,000. see when we're about a thousand feet away all of this is there you see see how that changed to off and there you see the vertical speed starting to slow down it's going to try and smoothly intercept us at 20,000 feet remember because we got it in there and importantly this switch is in the down position if we had that switch in the off position it would carry on climbing and completely ignore what we've got set here and I'll show you what the up position does in a moment. See, as that vertical speed is being reduced as we get nearer, we're starting to accelerate here. Again, it doesn't care about this speed. We've still got the climb thrust in. Let's worry about that in a moment. See, see, it's slowing us down very nice and gently as we get towards 20,000 feet. We'll just give it another few feet. 
There we go, that'll do. So what I'm going to do now is move this switch up to the hold position. I could leave it set like that the whole time, but the reason you want to change it is because let's say now we're holding at 20,000 feet. I'm now free to change this wheel to whatever is next and then I can reset it. So let's set it, let's say to 27. But before we start ringing the bells, we're getting awful close to this barber pole. Let's quickly switch this over from the thrust mode to speed. I can see the throttles racing backwards. Now it's going to go for the speed that we've got here. Let's take another look. We've got the modes here. All of this means now it's going to go for whatever speed we've got in the window, yeah? Providing we've got this switch turned on, it's going to aim for whatever we've got here. It's going to go all the way from idle thrust to whatever the maximum setting is. Yeah, so if we put TOD in, I won't even let you. All right, so if we put CON in, the maximum thrust it's going to give to try and maintain speed is a continuous maximum. There it's going to be whatever climb thrust is, and there for cruise, and there for go around. All right, so we're in the climb stage. We want to be in CLB for climb. And it kicks the auto throttle switch off when we change that mode to uh, takeoff. So let's put that in there. You see it's dipped below. And it's going to give all the way thrust to whatever the max continuous is. Because that's, uh, sorry, whatever the climb thrust is. And you can tell what they are by these orange needles here. Now, like I said, I had bound this switch here to my HOTAS. You can see I'm moving it there on the HOTAS. Watch what happens to these orange needles here. And that's on the different modes. So you can see for takeoff, that's the takeoff thrust there. That's the maximum. There's max continuous thrust there. There's climb thrust, which at this height happens to be the same. There's the cruise thrust setting. And there's the go around thrust setting. So let's drop it back to cruise and back to climb. Let's re-enable that switch. And so now we've got our speed here. Let's wind that up to 320. Whoops. Let's uh, sync up my uh, throttles first before I do so. Now you see it is going to chase this speed simply because we've got this in speed mode and not thrust setting mode. Right, now assume ATC clears us. Hang on, before we do, we're getting close to this beacon. So let's go ahead and switch this to heading mode so the autopilot doesn't get confused trying to chase the VOR beacon as we enter the corner confusion. All right, let's assume now up to cruise 31,000 feet. Notice we've got this in hold mode, so it's going to maintain whatever it was when we put it in, in this case, 20,000 feet. If we turn that off... We could even put in altitude select. It's not actually letting me change how, how bizarre. All right, so let's change this now. Over to vertical speed mode. Now watch what happens there, all right? So in altitude hold mode at 20,000 feet, I'm going to move this switch to vertical speed, all right? As soon as I do, it kicks this from out hold out. Now, because our vertical speed setting here is uh, zero, it's more or less going to maintain height. It may drift a little bit over time, but to all intents and purposes, it's going to continue flying level, all right? Now we can move this wheel up. Now let's go max. Now we've still got the speed mode in. And it's going to now give full throttle because it's trying to maintain 320 knots. Clearly it's not going to be able to do that when we're giving this max rate of climb. But it's going to try. And it's giving full thrust to try and do so. You could keep it in speed mode, but I prefer, once again, to give it into that thrust mode.
It's actually doing a pretty good job of it so far. Let me just wind this down to uh, 26,000 to make the point. So we're in vertical speed mode. We've got 26,000 in the window. We've got the auto thrust on, but it's in climb mode. It's not trying to maintain the speed, but it is at full throttle. Because it's, uh, it, you know, the speed's slowing down. We're asking too much from it. But look at this. We've got 26,000 in the window. We see we're at 24 and a half. Now, usually the autopilot would be kicking out about now, getting ready to level off, but it's not going to do so. You see, we're at less than 1,000 feet now. We hear the audio call from our first officer saying, you know, we got less than 1,000 feet. There's the altitude alert as we get inside 600. Look at that. It's passing straight through. Why is it passing straight through? until that we run out of stall. The answer is because we didn't put this into out cell mode. It's in off, so it's gonna carry on straight through. I'm gonna lower that vertical speed before we end up in a stall. But because we're above 26,000, let's go ahead and demonstrate this now. So we've got out cell mode in. We've got the vertical speed wheel going down. Let's put that into vertical speed mode. Put that back into alt cell. 26,000. Got about 700 feet to go. Speed picking up still. And there you have it. It switches out. In this case, we're only about 300 feet away because it was a much shallower descent. And you can see the autopilot actually spins this wheel by itself when it's trying to intercept something. You know, if you're not actively spinning it and it's not in vertical speed mode, the autopilot will move this wheel by itself to do whatever it needs, which is really handy because if you need to take over from the autopilot and turn this dial into VS, the, the, the wheel is already going to be wherever it was what the autopilot was doing. So it's not suddenly going to jerk up or down because the, the settings didn't match. All right, we're in EPA's thrust mode down here. We're in the climb mode setting. Let's go ourselves up to cruise. So here we are, 26,000. Let's put ourselves into altitude hold mode. Let's wait until we get up to 320. Let's pre-select 31,000 here with the altitude hold mode in. And let's dial that now into IAS. Now you see it begins climbing already based on what it was there. That switches from out hold mode to off. We want to make sure it stops at 31. So make sure then to move that switch down. Right, next thing. Let's have a look at the INS. Now this isn't an INS tutorial. And I know some people find it a little bit complicated. Especially since you need to put the coordinates in yourself. But let's just have a little look how we can make this work with the autopilot. So if we put this into distance and time, let's have a look here. We're currently 52, 51 nautical miles away from the second waypoint, from waypoint one to waypoint two, because we flew over the first waypoint. That was that VOR beacon. So to get to waypoint, we're going from one, this left side, to waypoint number two. All that we have to do to do that, let's switch this over from radio to INS and we can get a little idea. You can see we're actually to the right, of course, because we should have made a slight left turn after that beacon and we didn't. Let's try and amend that by ourselves, but we can obviously also make a... Let's do it actually. Let, let's, do, let's do it this way. Let's just fly 160 for now. I do a change go from my current position which is zero to waypoint two that's where we want to go and insert that that's going to recalculate this now we're going to be completely in line because it's from our present position we change this from head into INS mode that's now got the autopilot flying straight on to waypoint two now providing you've got this little switch in auto which it always is as soon as we get near waypoint two, this little thingamajig is going to switch over to waypoint three. 
and the autopilot therefore is going to steer on from wherever waypoint two is onto waypoint three. Now we're getting close to our cruise. Let's say Mach 8.82 is the way that we want to climb. We don't want to climb any faster on Mach. Remember, the indicated airspeed is going to stay the same, but the Mach number is going to rise. We're just going to switch this from IAS to Mach. And that's now going to climb at Mach 0.82. Granted, we're a little bit close to the altitude to demonstrate that properly. But you can see it's no longer going to accelerate Mach. It's going to, uh, and the airspeed's going to start dropping as we stick to the Mach climb now. This typically happens, you know, somewhat, somewhere in the higher 20s, 1,000 feet. And now we're going to run into the same problem as before. When we get to 31,000 feet, the speed's going to start running away as the vertical speed drops down. Barber pole much closer now because we're in the thinner air. So now we're at cruise. Let's give it another second. And there we go. Let's put this over into out hold mode now. That's close enough for me. And now we want to maintain in the cruise. So what we're going to do is come down here from climb. We're going to put it into cruise mode. And now we've got a couple of options. We could put it into speed mode and you'd be able to define exactly how fast you want to go. But typically now for cruise, you want to put this into the Mac mode. So we'll select Mac, the middle one there. This one's in cruise. And now if we look, it's going to fly at the comfortable cruise for the 74-2, which is typically point Mach 0.85. So typically speaking, that's what the auto throttle is going to go for, irrespective of what you've got dialed in here. Once again, it's going for the comfortable cruise, maybe a touch lower because we're, you know, we're a little low for a cruise, 31,000, but it's still going. You don't have direct control over this Mach number. So again, if you want to put a specific speed, you'd have to dial it in here. Say go, I don't know, let's say 320 knots, for example. And then you'd have to change this from Mach mode to speed. Just be aware that when you're changing height, these sort of numbers change very quickly when you're at this altitude. You could very quickly find yourself over the barber pole or in a stall. All right, so clearly we're not going to fly all the ways to Italy, but again, let's have a little look what we could do while we're here. I mean, again, just good housekeeping is to update your heading. In this case, it's uh, it's about 150, uh, 152, something like that, just in case ATC asks you to change. So let's have a look now at going direct to a specific point in space. All right. Now, granted, it's not got, a, you know, the old FMS where you can just type in a point. But you can do something similar. So let's have a little look just for the sake of argument here. <laughs> We're already coming over to the south coast of the UK. And let's go EGSS for Stansted. And I'm just using this to get the coordinates of the airport itself. So if we look here, we got the coordinates for Stansted, 51531 North and East 000141. So 5153.1 North. So we could manually go to this point. Now this route takes me all the way, if we look on the waypoint page, all the way to Italy. And I believe waypoint eight was my final one. Now, we could just simply scrub out another one, but I'm just going to use waypoint 9 because it's blank. Again, we could just erase an existing one. I'm going to go north 51.53.1. North 51.53.1. Okay. And then on the east side, it was triple zero, and we had 141. Insert. Okay, so waypoint 9 is now the 
location in 2D space of the airport. We can't put the altitude in here, but we've got the, you know, the, the latitude and longitude. So if I want to fly direct to here, bearing in mind that we are already in INS mode, whatever waypoint we've got selected, in this case, waypoint nine, I'm going to click here to change. So I'm going to change. I'm going to press zero. That's my current location. Nine for the waypoint that we've got selected. And it only goes up to nine. Press insert. And now you see the aircraft turning. As we head towards the uh, new waypoint here. So if we put this in distance time. See we're 145 nautical miles away from Stansted. It reckons it's going to take us about 18 minutes. That's going to start ticking down now as the aircraft heads towards. And what we can also do is. Right to put the distance. No 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 no. Distance time there put the uh, track error there so you see we're still needing to turn left a ton and then down here I like to have my wind information 199 at 50 now with this in here in INS mode of course you're going to know this you get your uh, distance here speed here why does that say 139 I should, oh I know why I didn't update the uh, waypoint position in that one. Never mind. Let's just focus on this one. So we're 59 from Stansted. So let's start descending. So again, we've got this in altitude hold mode. Let's assume we're going to go straight down to 10 in this example. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. Personally, I like to start in a vertical speed mode and go real gradual. So let's put that into VS mode. And I'm going to set something to about 500, maybe 8, something like that. You see the throttle starting to come back because it's still in cruise mode. But as we start dipping down, obviously, speed starts increasing. This is going to start rolling back. Now, you could take auto throttle off altogether and control it yourself. And typically, that's the way I like to do it until I get a bit closer and I need to be precise on speed and vertical speed and things like that. So let's try it my way. So I'm going to take the auto throttle off and I'm going to control these throttles myself. Let's say, look at this, we're about 320 knots. Let's say we're happy with that descent rate. So let's turn this over now to IAS. So now we've got the level change that we're all used to, or the open climb if you're in an open descent, let's call it, if you're in the uh, Airbus. Level change if you're in the modern Boeings. I'm going to drop this down again to make sure we don't descend down through 10,000 feet. And now autopilot has got control of the vertical speed. You can see it's very gradual descent. Now, because I've got rid of the auto throttle, if I bring these back, thrust comes back. With that, speed's going to start reducing. With that, autopilot is going to start increasing vertical speed to try and maintain whatever the indicated airspeed mode was when we plugged it in. And again, it was about 320. You can see it's maybe a hair or two underneath. So let's dial that down. And again, it's not connected to this. It's connected to whatever the speed was when we plugged that in. So let's pull the engines all the way back now to idle. And now you can see INS is heading us for a beeline direct towards Stansted. About 43 miles away. Reckons we're going to be there inside five minutes. All right. At this point, I'm thinking, yeah, we need to add parasitic drag and more than somewhat. And so to do it nice and smooth, let's change this from IAS to VS. And I'm just going to increase that vertical speed myself. Let's go to about 5,000 feet down. I'm just going to ignore the rest of the aircraft, you know, fuel pumps and signs and lighting and whatnot. Let's just focus purely on the autopilot. So here we are on the descent. You see speed starting to race up. And let's say 350 is going to be a sort of our comfortable descent rate. Maybe just a hair above. You can see the barber pole moving away as we're starting to descend down into thicker air. Let's go for this speed about now. So I'm going to switch over from VS back to IAS mode. I see autopilot pitching up. 
to maintain that new speed. All right, let's uh, let's have a little look now for the approach at Stansted. <laughs> it's not a lesson on how to uh, follow these uh, stars properly at all. But what we are going to do is uh, take a look at the autopilot. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Do we got late stages of a star? Again, we can't do any RNAV, so any of this RNAV stuff just skip right through it for the... Uh, And of course, they're all our navs now. Here, at least. Let's have a little look. I'll tell you what, we can do this one without. It's the latter stages, so let's try it. Again, it's just as part of... of uh, you know, I, I need to show you how the autopilot works in cohesion from one stage to the next. So let's have a look at that. So this is going to be... We'll uh, use this one here, which is a nice VOR. We'll turn down here towards uh, Brookman's Park, which is also a VOR, which is nice. And then we're turning left onto runway uh, 04 ILS. All right. So I'm now looking to intercept this. Typically, your last waypoint is going to throw you out into, uh, you know, your arrival. We're not doing that, but let's, because uh, we're just making it up on the fly. But let's see you go. 1625. All right. Also, when you're on your way down, you might want to change this from cruise to go around just so it's ready. And I'm going to change this mode here to speed. And again, it's not activated. We got this turned off. That's just ready for when it is. Okay, you can see the uh, autopilot starting to turn. We've uh, made our uh, we've made our waypoint here. So let's have a look then. Brookman's Park. So we need sixteen twenty-five on the left, and the next one was going to be. Oh no, sorry, that's Brookman's Park. This one's Barkway. So sixteen twenty-five on the left. Brookman's Park on the right. Seventeen five on the other side. There we go. Right, we need to uh, intercept ours on the 85 degree radial, so the inverse of 85 is going to be 265. There we go. And then when we're on yours, we want to be 224 for the next one, so we'll have that set there. All right. So now it's a case of trying to line these up. I've got I've got Barkway on my side and I need to intercept this. So I can see I need to be flying basically west to intercept this. So I'm now going to head east for a little while. I can see that I'm 13 miles away from my beacon. I'm more or less in line already. So let's keep this turn going. And in terms of height, look at this. I'll need to be uh, 8,000 when I'm 22 and a half miles away. So that's what we're going to shoot for. That's where we'll enter it, around 8,000 there. See there the distance. The reason I'm turning right more is because then I'm going to loop back round and hope to be in line on a westerly heading at that point. There we go, that'll do. See, we're descending real quick. Now watch what happens. Again, we got this insane speed that we wanted to maintain, 350. Autopilot's kicking us out of the descent right now as it's leveling us off for 10. Now, we got no auto throttle in because we were controlling it manually. Clearly, that's going to stay the same. And so speed's going to bleed off and bleed off fast. Got a hell of a lot of parasitic drag at 350 knots, especially down where the air's thick. So let's go ahead and dial this down now. I'm just going to quickly grab a suitable approach speed, performance calc, landing, flaps 30. I'm going to read from the sim. Runway length, I think it's about 11,000 feet. It's down near the ground, let's uh, read the weather from the sim. Runway 04. We'll set the bugs, and it's saying 
auto brake medium, so we'll tune that in as well. Okay, so we can forget about that. All right, so I'm looking for 2,400. Let's hold here. And remember, the first point was 8,000. So I got that tuned, got out hold in. We're at 10. We're letting the speed dip down to about 240. Then we're going to start descending. And there we are. We're 23 miles away. So I'm going to make the left turn now. Again, doesn't have to be too precise, but I want to get it, you know, ballpark there. So there we are, 240. Let's go ahead and put that into IAS mode. Autopilot's going to try and maintain 240. This is in speed mode on go around thrust. We're going to put the auto throttle on now as well. And now that we're in closer, you know, we want to be more precise. We don't want to be doing any more insane descents like that. I know I said I wouldn't, but go on. Let's put the lights on for fun. Put the signs on. And let's focus again on the task at hand. So we're looking, uh, let's get rid of that now. Oh, no, not performance. We've got the numbers there, we know it. Approach speed's about 150. All right. So back over here. So we're looking to intercept the 265. I do got the icon on. I don't like it on usually, but for purposes of tutorial, yeah, look, we're down there somewhere. So we're looking to intercept this quite a ways away, actually. And again, if we, uh, if we take a look at the HSI, this single uh, arrow is my side, yeah, VOR1. The double arrow is VOR2, which is your side. So you can see it's on about our 10 o'clock position, which if we look, we're here, the beacon's here, and if we draw an imaginary line, yeah, 10 o'clock, that sort of lines up. So we'll continue on there. I'm not going to bother going all the way out there. It's just going to add unnecessary time. In fact, I'll tell you what, let's uh, speed things up a little bit. Let's uh, break the rules some. In fact, I'll bring you back when we're a touch closer. Stand by one. All right, I'm bringing you back. And I've decided uh, to wind the clock back a bit and give us a bit of night lighting. So here we are. We're coming over here to intercept again 8,000 you see we need to be 22 and a half miles away again it's not an, uh, a tutorial on this but again just trying to get this right so I'm going to now make a left hand turn I'm going to dial that head in into about 265 I don't know let's go for 300 that's going to give us about a 35 degree intercept what I'm going to do is once I'm on past perpendicular here which is about now I'm just going to count a few seconds while this turn carries on and then I'm going to enable Vorlock yeah? and now the autopilot is armed if not already intercepting to go towards this VOR beacon on a 265 course I'm also going to uh, make sure that my radio option there is on, not INS. There you see we're going through the uh, 265 right now, which makes sense. We've just shot through it there. So there we are, 8,022 and a half miles. Let's see, we're about 23. Once we're at 22 and a half, we need to descend down to six. So same story here again. We'll put this into out hold mode, 8,000 foot. But we need to stay there for another half mile. We'll already have 6,000 selected. There's we go. Let's put that into vertical speed mode. And I'm just going to manually uh, turn this down now to about 1,000-ish. There we go. We'll put that into out cell again so we don't shoot through at 6. And I'm going to slow down now to flaps 1, which is going to be about uh, about there. In fact, do you know what? I'm going to slow down. It's a little too fast for me. To 210. I'm going to go ahead and deploy flaps one. Flaps one. So autopilot is a little bit north of where it should be, but you can see it's turning left a few degrees to try and intercept with that radial again. You can see we've got a very lazy, very, very lazy indeed right hand bank there by about one degree as we're coming in there to intercept we need to be 6,000 feet by the time we're 15 miles if we take a look here 
We're about three miles to go with about a thousand feet to go. So I'm just going to expedite that descent a little bit. Just go past about 1500 and uh, let's add flaps five. And I'm going to continue winding back to flaps five speed. It's going to be about 193 looking at this bug. And what I'm looking for now is this uh, radial here. We need to be on a 224 course to intercept the 44th degree radial abruptness park. Now, again, that's at your side, yeah? 1750. We've got the course in there, 224. And so I'm going to keep glancing over at your instrumentation because I know that what when this yellow line there moves into the middle, that's when I need to... Uh, Go 224. Now, because I'm on Vorlock, I could already change my heading to 224 just so it's ready to go. I don't like switching autopilots over side to side to track different VOR beacons, although you could do that. The way I like to do it is uh, go over to heading, copy your VOR stuff over to mine, and put the next phase of the flight over on your side if time allows. So here we are, 6,000 feet. You can see we've intercepted. So let's move that back up to alt hold. And let's look at the next stage. 6,000 there. And then we need to be at or below 3,000 once we're nine miles away from Buckman's Park. So we're getting awfully close to the point where we need to turn. See, we're still about 11 miles away from Barkway, but... If you look at the approach, it doesn't actually take us all the way to Barkway. We've got to turn off before. And again, that turn off is at 224 course inbound to uh, to this VOR here, Brookman's Park. <laughs> I'm both starting with B. It's confusing my little brain. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. So I'm simply going to switch from Vorlock over to heading mode. You see, we're at 6,000 and we can start descending once we're 18 miles or less from Brookman's Park. We need to be at 3,000 by the time we're 9 miles away. We're in out hold mode. We're already at 6. We're in out hold mode, so it's safe for me to pre-select this down to 3. I'm going to go ahead and tune Brookman on my side now. So I need to uh, get copy yours there, 17.5. And I'm also going to copy the course, which is 224. And now with this info on my side, I can go ahead and once again, Vorlock. And that's going to very precise me, precisely track me down on there. AC, 19 miles. And we've got one more mile to go before we can start descending down to 3,000. I'm going to go ahead and go flaps 10 at this point. Flaps 10. Reduce speed uh, to about 175. And it looks like we've got some rain. There we are. So let's put VS mode in and once again down. Let's go about 2,000 feet. I'm not sure if it's possible uh, to maintain that. If you don't know what the max rate is, once again, IAS, be aware it's going to kick your auto throttle out at that point and just manually bring them all the way back. To get rid of the gear warning light, just move your throttles ever so slightly off the back stop there. And this is going to give whatever max descent rate is for, you know, your old level change. I'm going to switch it back into VS. Let's put the out hold back in at 3000. And let's put the auto throttle there back on. All right, so for the next stage, you see once we're five miles away from Brookman's Park, we've got to be 200 knots or less and begin a left turn onto a heading of 134 before we turn on to final to be at or below 3,000. 3,000 in there is fine. Level so because we're on the VOR low now, which is course 224, 
I'm going to dial my heading into 134. So that's ready to go. And then we can end this up with an ILS. Alright, so coming close to 3,000. I should have checked the weather, but I... Uh, actually, hang on. What am I doing? Uh, if we come over to performance calc, just read data from sim. You see barometric is 3,000. So let's dial that in. 3,000. And to come over to the engineer's panel as well. Better late than never on the old pressure there. There we go. Alright, so you hear the thrust increase. That's a good sign that we've met 3,000 feet. Which we have. So let's go ahead and put the out hold mode in. And if we come over here, we can see that we've got another one down at 2.5. So as long as the out holds mode's in there, we'll pre-select that down to 2.5. And now it's just a case of waiting until we're five miles from Brookman's Park before we start this left turn. And if we take a look here on the DME, we see we're about 10. I'm going to go ahead and pre-select the ILS on your side, which is 110.50. So 1050 there is set. And if we have a look over on the approach page for the course, we see it's 042 degrees. So I'm going to uh, dial that on your side as well. And then I know once I start this turn, I just copy the info from your side and we'll be good to go. Still got a little bit of time before this goes. So I'm going to just do some niceties. We'll get the minimums in. We see here it's 200 feet on the rad out. And so uh, we'll dial that one in there. Some airlines like to add on a little bit. Again, I never see the point. But you know what? Let's just play along and add 50 feet on. So we'll go 250. And if we take a look up top, we can have a quick look at Miss Approach Procedure. And we see it's up to 3,000 feet, runway heading, and then direct to Barkway, 1625. The only way you could pre-select that is by not having both ILSs tuned in on both sides, and that doesn't let you have auto land. So it's going to be your choice. Do you want auto land, or do you want to do the missed approach procedure properly? In any case, let's come back here. You see, we're five miles before this turn. We're sorry, the procedure says five. We're at six. I've still got the VOR on my side. And once we go through that point, we can start our descent down to 2.5. You see, we've got a little ways to do it. So I'm going to make a real shallow descent. Let's focus on this turn now. 5, 2, 5, 1. There we go. Five miles. So we put that into heading mode. We're well below 200, which is the criteria there. Let's go ahead and put this into VS mode. Start a real shallow descent. And we'll put that into out cell to make sure we don't drop through 2.5. I'm going to go and give myself about 500 feet per minute there. And with regards to turn on to final, it's uh, one where 72 degrees from Brookman's Park. That is our turn to final. So let's go ahead and uh, put 72 degrees on here. There we go. And now if I move my camera guy's head up, we here we see this line approaching. As soon as that line's centre line, we need to turn final, which is 042 degrees. So that'll do. Let's go. 042. And now it's a case of uh, final approach. So I'm going to copy what you've got on your side, which is 042 degrees, 1050. There we go. And now we're set up for the ILS. Let's see how close we get. We can always ease off the turn a bit. Give ourselves 20 degrees intercept. And actually not there yet. So let's go heading 67, which is going to give us 25 degrees. You see it's alive. We've got glide slope and localizer information. I'd say that turn to final uh, didn't need to be as soon as what was stated. Glide slope actually starting to come down 
before the localizer is coming across. So I'm going to increase my head in a little bit. There we go, finally. All right, so now we can move this from VOR to ILS. And that's going to go ahead and capture the localizer. I'm going to put my head in on at 42. And as soon as that glide slope comes down through, there you are. Lovely uh, intercept there on the localizer by the autopilot. Just in time, glide slope less than half a dot away. And now you can see it. Nav and glide slope, both arms. We're starting to descend down through. ILS mode is in. I'm going to go ahead and pre-select our missed approach out there, which is 3,000. And at this point, we're on final. Let's go ahead and dump the gear, bring the flaps down, reduce speed a little more. And if you want the auto land now, providing that both radios match and everything else matches and you're all tuned, you just move that switch over to land. You move the other autopilot up, A, B, land, and with that now, should be all good to go. Let's go flaps 25, and let's continue reducing speed for the approach. I forget what it was now. I uh, can't quite see in here. It's a little bit dark. Auto land armed, we hear it. We're four miles away. That's a little slow. Let's go flaps full. But Right, auto brake there is medium. Let's put a little bit. Oh, no, that should have been on anyway. So there we go. Auto brake's medium. And down here, all that remains to do is arm the spoilers. And with that, we're good to go. 1,000. One thing to note when we do land is the autopilot doesn't keep it straight with the rudder. It throws the yoke over as though it's the rudder. So if you see the autopilot trying to steer it like a car, just put your feet on the pedals. I mean, you should be able to see the center line anyway, but just be aware it doesn't necessarily keep it on the center line, especially if there's a bit of a crosswind. It lands it well in my experience, but it doesn't necessarily hold it there. So again... I will allow it to happen just to make the demo if we do see it. Uh, let's. Uh, terrain, terrain. Approaching minimums. There's the minimums continue. Autopilot doing a good job. Two white, two red. Bit of a long landing, but. Long landing, long landing, 6,000 no feet remaining. All right, so there's the touchdown. 5, put the reverses in. As soon as you put the reverses in. Now, here's what I'm saying. Let me just 4, pause. Look 000. at this. Remaining. We're starting to veer off to the right. Look at the way that the autopilot's trying to correct for that. It's trying to steer left. So just when I unpause, all I'm going to do is put left boot in, but leave everything else as is. I'm going to put full reverse in. We're getting awfully close to the end here. I can see autopilot trying to steer the other way again. So again, just be cognizant of that. Just use the rudders. Careful not to tap the tow brakes, because again, we got the auto brake in. All right, let's go idle reverse. All right, it made use of all the runway, didn't it? That's for sure. All right, let's tap the brakes. That's going to get rid of auto brake. Let's stow the reverses, and I'm going to bring the flaps in. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, clear that out remaining. the end of the tutorial i hope you found that one useful and i hope that you learn everything that the autopilot can do because that is everything that the autopilot can do there in one lesson including the flight start to finish till next time oh by the way i'll say until next time this isn't really my main channel check me out on fox 3 simulations if you are all interested in dcs stuff but until now with the phoenix 747 200 classic that's it from me on a wet and wild uh Wow, I messed that end up. A wet and wild stansted. That's what I was trying to say. Nothing but professional shit here. Until next time, take care, bye.